Hi guys, it's Ray. Uh, we are going to work a little bit differently again today. Um, we are going to do another set of 3D effect tumblers, but I'm going to show you like the whole process because I get a lot of questions about how I print and all of that. Um, if you do not have a printer of your own, uh, Jessica of Butterfly Lane Designs has been adding um, printed wraps for the 3D effect tumblers. Um, if you go to the website through my link below, you can go into that section in the drop down menu, tumbler wraps, and you can get to them that way. Um, and I do have my code in the link down below. I will also link to whatever designs I end up using here. But I just put into Creative Fabrica a search for 3D effect tumbler. And we'll see what we come up with. I really like the vibrancy of like these ones. I'm going to go with this. Just because I don't want to spend all day picking two wraps. And this one is one of the ones that looks like an image of quilled paper. So, once it's downloaded, I'll just unzip it and open it up. And see how this is all the quilled paper look. And I'm going to save it to my computer. This is going to go in a random file, but that's fine. I don't know where it is. And then this one is ready to go also. Now, to print my full wraps, I do not use um, Design Space or any of that. I'm sorry, you're going to see me in a lot of reflective glare behind me. Um, I don't want to update my printer right now. So I use a program called Apache Open Office. It is a free word program. That is what I do all of my wrap printing from. So this is what the text looks like when you go to start. You're not going to be able to print with it like this, obviously a full wrap. So I come down here to the page setting. And I click on page and I select orientation. I swap it to landscape and then I go into margins and I go with last custom value because my last custom value, every single margin all the way around is set to zero. So I have no border on this paper anymore. Then I can come back up to the top and go into insert and insert a picture from file. And here's my owl. So this is set to the industry's industry standard 9.3 by 8.2. If I want to change that, I can. And I may go down to like 9.27. I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom anyways, except I just messed that up. So I'm going to go into undo changes. You have to click on the keep ratio. It doesn't automatically do that for you. So that one is ready to print. So I'm going to come over to file, print, and I'm going to print on the... Um, 
me show you. I'm going to print on the HTV Rant printable vinyl sticker paper for inkjet and laser printers in matte white. So I'm going to use my regular ET2800 series networked. That is my standard printer. My letter size is set. My paper type I am going to set to presentation paper matte and I'm going to do a high print and before I hit OK, well, I'm going to hit OK, but before I hit print, I'm going to move you down. So this is my printer setup. I have my sublimation printer on the top shelf and my regular printer on the bottom. I have them marked so if I move them, I don't screw up. But these are both EcoTank 2803s. Um, so that is what I am printing with. So I'm going to go ahead and hit print. Um, it's not going to like my paper type, so I'm going to have to override it most likely. Just because it's, um, it thinks it's loaded with plain white paper. So I'm just going to hit next and okay. And it'll print what I fold it on what I fold it. Okay, so this one is fully printed. It looks phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to let the ink dry on this for a little bit. Uh, not too long. It doesn't usually take long at all. And we're just going to come back up. I have this selected, the boxes around it. I'm just going to insert picture from file. So there's that, and that should be at the new size. And it is. And since we're going straight from this to this, it should remember the print properties. And it does. So I'm going to let this one print. And we'll come over and cut these down. So my other like most frequently asked question is about my paper trimmer. Uh, this is probably the one you see the most currently. But these are all Fiskars trimmers. They are all rotary trimmers. I don't like the skinny blade style one. And they all work, but they all have advantages and disadvantages. Um, I have links for all of these on Amazon. But this one is the most basic. They all have a swing away arm to make them longer. Um, this one I like to use because... Um, and I may get a new one of this one. This one I like best overall because I can see the exact cut line. The, the blade runs right along this plastic edge. Um, so you know exactly where the cut is going to go. But it's also... And they're all the same um, cut height, so it really doesn't matter there. But this is the cheapest one. And this is also, I've had this one for, oh my god, a very, very long time. This is the middle of the edge, the middle guy. This one is my least favorite because, and this one and this one are this flawed in the same way. But this swings out. I do actually like the way it lines up on this edge better on this one than this one. But um, you can't always trust these to be straight when you line something up on the edge. It just, but I think this one does a better job than some of the others. And by that, I mean, like if I line up a straight edge over here, I can see where it's not quite straight sometimes. But I think this one does the best job there of the three. However, this is the problem with both of these bypass trimmers. And I'm not sure if you can see this. When I line it up to the edge of the plastic, and I'll go ahead and cut this. 
the edge of the plastic isn't where the cut line is. The edge of the metal is where the cut line is. So you almost have to um, like eyeball it. And sometimes you still end up with a little bit of white there. So that is the biggest downfall with that one. And this one has a wider metal edge over here. But the cut is beautiful and you can cut many, many layers at once. This one flips open so you have a big solid surface, which I really like, which is why I go for this one more frequently. It also does have a short measuring tool on this side, but again, same thing. You don't always necessarily get a straight edge at the top, so I kind of like to line up on the grid lines. I feel like that's more secure. And this one has much less of a metal edge here, but it still has a slight metal edge. But I find it easier to eyeball this one. So you've been seeing me use this one the most frequently lately. And it does give a beautiful clean cut. Um, if you're cutting something down to a set size, this is great because you line it up on the sides. But because these are such an odd size that you're cutting to, you really can't do that. So that is where the eyeballing process comes into play. So I will put links to all three of these on Amazon down below. Uh, some of the craft stores do carry them. Some of them don't. So, or have different models. I saw the little tiny tip of the white on that one. Also, on this one, this is what I use to cut my pinstripes from vinyl most of the time. Because if you can see the edge of the plastic to this, um, that is roughly, because this is the quarter inch mark at the edge of the cutting track. It's roughly an eighth of an inch, so a lot of the time if I'm just cutting my pinstripes from vinyl, I'll just line it up right on the edge of that and cut that width rather than messing around with the Cricut or any of that. So this one and this one are my most used. But there we are. I'm going to get out my super squeegee. I absolutely love this thing. This was gifted to me from a viewer. And again, Stacy, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is fantastic. So I'm going to kind of pick up at this point, pick up the pace a little bit because this video is going to be forever long otherwise. But I'm going to cut an edge off of both. And stick it back down somewhat. So my top line's up, my bottom might be a little bit off. But I'm not overly concerned because we are going to glitter and squeegee, lift, get started. And voila. Um, this is why I try and resize them. I do have some overlap here because this went over absolutely nothing. But I'm not overly worried about it. So that is wrapped. We are going to glitter the bottoms of these quick with Mod Podge.
So I need to seal the glitter in quick, so I'm just gonna use polycrylic for that. And a brush. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry, and then we will get them coated. But I think they're both absolutely gorgeous, and I'll be right back. Okay, okay, I am ready to get these two coated. These are all dry now. If some glitter travels, it's really not the end of the world. Um, I'm going to use the Fast Set Turbo from CC DIY on these and see what happens. So there we go. I'm going to put about 15 on each cup. I'm going to work back and forth just so I kind of get it even. And even though this mixed fairly bubble free, the ink may still off gas a little bit on these and create a little bit of bubbling. And I did kind of duff it up here at the top a little bit. That's how quick this starts to cure. This is already drying. I mean, drying, drying. So, I may, whoops, that's what it means by it's smoking point. So this one I'm going to have a few more bubbles showing than this one, I believe, but... I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to come back in and do another coat the same way, I believe. So, I'll be back. Okay, so I am mixing up my epoxy again. Same deal, same epoxy. 15 m or, yeah, 15 ml of B and 15 ml of A. So this says to wipe these off after use, or you may get dry pieces that flake off. Um, they're not kidding. Like, if you can see it on here, this is what these ultra fast sets do. Their single sides dry when exposed to air. Um, let me show you this since we're here. This is the same size bottle of Lightning Cure, um, which I would say is equivalent to this. This is what happens when you don't wipe it off. And this is what happens after the bottle is exposed to air for quite some time over use. That's why they basically only sell smaller sizes of these. Um, there is a little bit of product waste. It's not all the way up to here wasted. It's down here. It's just kind of dried in layers on the outside of the bottle. So, 
When they say wipe off your bottle, wipe off your bottle. And really they mean B because the A doesn't seem to do that in either brand that I've noticed. But otherwise you could get chunks of that dropping into your epoxy. Okay, so I'm gonna pop my gloves off and give it a torch. This torch should be quicker because it should have less bubbles because it's not sucking anything out of the ink. Again, we are not self-leveling, so, and I don't know how this would deal with um, those of you that like to squirt alcohol on them to pop your bubbles. I didn't see anything about that in the reading. It's not something I typically do on tumblers, so I really can't comment on that to begin with. But I'm going to let these go. I may have a little bit of waviness in these two this time around. Um, but overall, I am pretty happy with this product, so, and if you feel like you're getting waves, you can always do your final coat in your, you know, whatever your go-to epoxy is. I'm struggling to have a go-to epoxy currently, so, um, the one that I bought thinking was going to be my go-to is actually not working well all of a sudden with my humidity here so I'm sort of struggling a little bit but um, I'm probably gonna put one more coat on these you don't need to see that so I'm just gonna bring you down and get a little final look there's that beautiful quilled owl 3d effect image with the blue glitter bottom and this rose glitter bottom on this sculpted butterfly and greenery. So two more 3D effect tumblers start to finish from the whole printing process, all of it. Um, I hope this answered some questions and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.